Lords and ladies, I have good news and I have bad news. Which do you want to hear first? Well, typically people want to hear the good news first, I think. So the good news is that it's almost certain, not completely, but almost certain that Baldur's Gate 3 will be gaining a sequel. The bad news is that, as you are already aware, Larian Studios will have absolutely nothing to do with the production and development of the sequel. Now, this information comes from a Game Rant article that was released a day or two ago, and it talks about the fact that it's almost certain that Baldur's Gate 3 will be getting some kind of sequel. And this is all based on the fact that Baldur's Gate 3 was so incredibly successful commercially, and Hasbro doesn't want to let go of that potential for making money. Now, I sort of touched upon this briefly in my other video, which has not gotten a lot of views, but I talked about the fact that these guys ultimately are only motivated by greed, and that's the only reason why anything like this would be made. And this is why this is sort of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it is theoretically great that they're looking to produce some kind of sequel to Baldur's Gate 3. On the other hand, their motivations are disturbing on some level, because if the only motivation is monetary, then there might be a problem. However, they've made clear that they're not rushing into this. So from the article, and having spoken to one Eugene Evans, who's the Senior Vice President of Digital Strategy and Licensing at Hasbro, and this is a quote, he said, we're going to take our time and find the right partner, the right approach, and the right product that could represent the future of Baldur's Gate. We take that very, very seriously, as we do with all our decisions around our portfolio. We don't rush into decisions as to who to partner with on products or what products we should be considering. Specifically, Evans states that while the company hopes that it doesn't take another 25 years to release the next game in the franchise, Hasbro is making its decision cautiously and with care. After the massive success of Baldur's Gate 3, this is definitely something Hasbro doesn't want to rush into. And the article continues with the fact that since Dungeons and & Dragons and Baldur's Gate 3 is the property of Wizards of the Coast, and that is technically canon in terms of the lore that many of the characters might be making a return to the setting. Now, there are a couple points to be made here, the one I already made, the fact that this is not being done for charity, this is not being done because Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast really likes the Forgotten Realms or really likes Baldur's Gate. This is being done for purely monetary reasons, and it begs the question whether or not that can lead to a potentially good game. I theorized in my previous video that that might be the case, but also might not be. I'm not sure. Probably not. I think when your only motivation to make something is money, then the quality tends to suffer because you tend to cut corners, you tend to look for shortcuts, you tend to just take the most expedient and quickest route to get it done. And that clearly wasn't the case with Larian because it was a passion project. But what can you do? Now, the funny thing here is that I'm personally kind of tired of the city of Baldur's Gate. And just because something is called Baldur's Gate doesn't mean it necessarily would take place in Baldur's Gate. The entirety of Baldur's Gate 2, as well as the Throne of Baal, has literally nothing to do with Baldur's Gate. You land initially in Athkatla, then you move on to other places, such as the island with the Insane Asylum and the Underdark, and so on and so forth. So just because it has the label Baldur's Gate doesn't mean it's necessarily going to take place in the city itself or be connected to the city itself. Baldur's Gate at this stage is kind of a rubric more than anything else, but it would still have to be connected in some way to the previous story. Because as different as Baldur's Gate 2 is, in terms of the locations, in terms of where you go in the game, it is ultimately connected to the saga of the Ballspawn. And so personally, I'm not sure how they would connect the dots there and weave those plot points together. More broadly, I'd like to see more games in other regions of the Forgotten Realms. This is not the first time I've said this. I've said this many times on this channel. I'm a little bit tired of the Sword Coast, and I'm also a little bit tired of Western Faerun. I'd love to see something in the Moonsea region, in the unapproachable east near Thay, in the north, or even in the far south, but this repetitious Sword Coast, Waterdeep, Neverwinter, Baldur's Gate. I just think that Faerun as a continent within the Forgotten Realms has a lot more to explore and offer beyond this tried and true region of Faerun, that is the Sword Coast. And there's a final question here, a very important one I think, and that is whether or not people 
would be just as giddy to buy a Baldur's Gate 4, whatever you want to call it, some kind of sequel to the Baldur's Gate 3 game, whatever you call that, if it's not being made by Larian. Now hear me out. Although there are many aficionados and acolytes of the Forgotten Realms and Dungeons and & Dragons, and I probably would count myself as one of them, a lot of people played and enjoyed Baldur's Gate for reasons that have nothing to do with Dungeons & Dragons, the Forgotten Realms, or anything even remotely related to that. Rather, they came to appreciate the unique style, approach, and mechanics that Larian as a studio decided to introduce and implement in the game. That means that Hasbro slash Wizards of the Coast might be misjudging the situation a little bit by assuming that everyone would be just as interested in any Baldur's Gate 3 spin-off, sequel, whatever you want to call it, as long as it takes place in the same region, area, etc. I'm not sure about that. I think a lot more people are wedded to the idea of Larian being an excellent studio, which it is, I think indisputably, and that they'd be much keener on buying whatever other game Larian puts out in the future, which will not be a D&D game. We know that for certain, Larian is permanently and forever done with Dungeons and & Dragons. And so Hasbro could be miscalculating here. Hasbro could be thinking, wow, everyone loves Baldur's Gate because it's Baldur's Gate and Dungeons and & Dragons, when in reality, maybe it's just 50% of the people or 40% or only 30%. And the rest of the people just really enjoy a good RPG, or just enjoy the mechanics and the style and the general approach of Larry. That is a distinct possibility, and this ties in directly to something that's just as important, and also directly connected to this, namely Larian's infamous ability, if you will, to make a game that appeals to virtually every demographic out there. As I've mentioned many times in this channel, Baldur's Gate 3 has something, indeed many things, for everybody. If people don't like combat, there are many ways you can avoid it. You can reduce the difficulty. If you like drama and soap operas, well, in that case, Baldur's Gate 3 is perfect for you. If you do like combat and like mechanics, then figuring out builds and playing on honor mode and managing your resources is also a great option available. If you're a lore freak, there's a lot going on in the game, and so on and so forth. And so Larian has this fairly unique ability to draw in multiple people from all sorts of demographics and appeal to them all. And it begs the question whether or not Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast could ever find somebody to replace them who's equally capable of performing this feat. Somehow, I have my doubts about this. Though it is also possible that both Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro looked at the numbers and determined that Dungeons & Dragons is a winning product. Indeed, mentioned in the previous video, they have numerous products and projects in the works of multiple studios they're supporting that will be working on different types of Dungeons and Dragons games because what they've come to realize in their interpretation, and they could be wrong about this, is that there is a real thirst for the Dungeons and Dragons setting made digital. And I certainly love the setting of Dungeons and Dragons. As you know, I've made tons of lore videos, but I have the sneaking suspicion that most people don't. So I'm not sure. So at the end of the day, this is a mixed blessing at best. On some level, it's great that Baldur's Gate 3 will be getting some kind of sequel, whether you call it Baldur's Gate 4 or Baldur's Gate 79, whatever you want to call it. But the intentions behind it and the fact that I just don't think other studios have the wherewithal and the stuff to make a game that's even vaguely comparable to Baldur's Gate 3. So... I guess we'll have to wait and see. On the one hand, they're being cautious, obviously Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. On the other hand, they don't want it to take forever. So they're gonna have to walk a difficult line carefully, find the right studio, and then pray to the gods that it turns out well enough that it sells enough copies because that's all they care about at the end of the day. They just care about the numbers and the money they can make with the numbers. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. If you like my videos, you can support the channel by leaving a like, commenting, subscribing, sharing my video, be much appreciated, and I'll check you out next time. Take care.